Hello. It's uh, me again. Um, I thought that maybe this video would just start off by having a look at uh, something that I've not really shown you, and that's how how I laser cut all this lovely stuff, all the beautiful laser cut things. How is it made? Nobody knows. So uh, let's check it out. Let's see how it's done. Let's go to the laser place and shoot some lasers at some stuff. See what happens. I don't. I, I don't know what happens. Let's have a look. First thing I'm going to do, mount the wood in here so that the wood's perfectly flat. So it's wobbly, bending up and down, it's not going to get laid very well. So I'm basically using these little bits of wood. These, I'm pushing them down into this grid, yeah? Pinning the wood down to keep it straight. So now I've basically just got all these little bits of wood just like rammed in there, just holding it down someplace. So I've got these clips and holding the wood so that it, it's more or less flat so that the laser uh, can focus. Next, I need to use this focus thingy there and stick it there. I need to uh, adjust this until it's just right. There we go. Right, set the focus there, move the laser to exactly where I want it to be. Right, the only one thing left, and that is to push this button right there. Okay, I'm back in the studio at home. I've got all these laser cut bits and we're just gonna stick them together and make some stuff. What we're gonna make? Today, we're going to make a magical wireless super hi-fi sound gun. How is it magical? You might wonder. It's not. It's not magical. It's uh, but it is wireless. Uh, also, uh, it's not. It's not super hi-fi. It's actually going to be really low-fi. Uh, we're going to basically be using these uh, ISD eighteen twenty uh, little sample modules, which are. I think these these chips are actually made for uh, telephone answering machines. So really low quality. Uh, but the way they're configured when you buy them as a little module like that, they're. The, the clock, the clock that runs the CPU isn't running fast enough, so we, we want to just kind of give it a little bit more, um, a little bit higher sample rate and also make it respond a bit faster when we push the buttons to record and play back. Uh, and to do that, we're just going to... Hello. Time for another pro tip. In order to make this uh, lovely sampler module run a little bit faster and more responsive, we're going to bridge these two points with a 63K resistor. Uh, that'll make the internal clock run a little bit faster and it will make it respond quicker and give us a higher sampling rate. And better audio quality. So here are the basics laid out. I've got four ISD1820 modules that have all been modded. You can see the resistor on the top on some of them. They're gonna have each their uh, play button on the front panel here and a record button as well. And then the microphones, I'm just gonna use the microphones that are already on there. So they've made little holes so that the microphones can be, you know, they'll line up with the holes. And then here we have just a power distribution board that is just uh, so I can connect the five volts to everything. Here we have a five volt regulator. It's a buck converter that'll just take whatever voltage we're getting in and convert it to five volts to power these. And then on this board here is a 3.3 uh, .3 volt regulator that'll uh, regulate 3.3 .3 volts for the uh, micro bit that will be controlling it all. I'm also going to be putting one of these boards in here that we soldered earlier. Uh, not that I actually need one, I could just use the pins on the micro bit because there's only four samplers here that need to be controlled. Uh, but it, it's easy because it brings the voltage up to five volts so I don't have to put a, 
logic converter on each one of these. So I've got a few more things hooked up now. This uh, little amplifier board that I've got down here that is driving this little speaker. Uh, so now I can play recording different noises and play them back. This one's not playing now because it's actually held on by this. Uh, so I can then probably, hopefully, take this uh, micro bit that I've just programmed with a bit of code that sends I2C messages to the input output expander. If I plug that in, it'll... So that works. Brilliant. Here's, here's the front panel that we need to uh, connect up. Let's see. Yeah. Got a bunch of buttons here for recording and playing back sounds. Um, got a plug on the side here that we can plug like electricity into, like that, and it can start like functioning. Got the I mentioned we've got buttons that we can push. Oh, and it can play. We've got we've got lights. Got record buttons. Record buttons. We've got I've got a knob here, a volume knob. Brilliant. We've got a jack, an output on the side so you can plug jack in it. It's got everything we need. It's all just ready to put all the rest of the walls on it. Look, it can do all... Okay, so the actual uh, sample part of it is uh, done. Apart from uh, writing some code for the micro bit, but check this out. Hey! Hey! Yes, what? Just about finished this panel right here. You can see that uh, we've got a sampler on it here. And of course we've got another sampler down there. I think that's gonna be plugged in around the back. Uh, we've got the uh, mixer here that the cables will be going to. And then on the back, of course, we still need to mount some power supplies and stuff around here so that it can just be hung on the wall and put, put a hard wooden frame on it so that it stays stiff. But basically it's done. Oh, 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 oh,